President, I truly appreciate the remarks of the distinguished majority leader, and I wholeheartedly associate myself with them, particularly in praise and compliments to the distinguished senior senator from Vermont and his colleague, the ranking member of the Budget Committee, the senator from South Carolina. Mr. President, it is obvious if one looks at the historical record since we passed the Budget Act that we have not succeeded in regulating or controlling the federal budget. In particular, we have failed to prevent an intolerable annual deficit that has continued to increase in each of the years since that time, and we have not succeeded in controlling the other federal borrowing, the so-called off-budget borrowing of the federal government. This borrowing does not receive nearly as much press, but it now amounts to well over $100 billion total. This borrowing, this competition by the federal government within the private sector for the monies that you or I or anybody else in this country needs in order to increase their personal and business activities has resulted not only in an extraordinary pressure on interest rates, but also has underlying mechanisms that make it the principal cause of rampaging inflation. So Mr. President, the problem is we have not succeeded. And that is the bottom line. Now, the Budget Act, although it may have reduced the level of deficit in borrowing, nevertheless has clearly failed. That is clear to anyone who so much as looks at the economy of today with a climbing interest rate, a falling dollar, steady unemployment, and a gross national product that is not growing one iota. Mr. President, I truly appreciate the remarks of my distinguished majority leader, and I wholeheartedly associate myself with them, particularly in praise and compliments to the distinguished senior senator from Vermont and his colleague, the ranking member of the Budget Committee, uh, the senator from South Carolina. Mr. President, it is obvious if one looks at the historical record since we passed the Budget Act uh, that we have not succeeded in regulating or controlling the federal budget. In particular, we have failed to prevent an intolerable annual deficit that has continued to increase in each of the years since that time, and we have not succeeded in controlling the other federal borrowing, and the so-called off-budget borrowing of the federal government. Now, this borrowing does not receive nearly as much press, but it now amounts to well over $100 billion total. This borrowing, this competition by the federal government, within the private sector for the monies that you or I or anybody else in this country needs in order to increase their personal and business activities has resulted not only in an extraordinary pressure on interest rates, but also has underlying mechanisms that make it the principal cause of rampaging inflation. So Mr. President, the problem is we have not succeeded. That is the bottom line. The Budget Act, although it may have reduced the level of deficit in borrowing, nevertheless has clearly failed that is clear to anyone who so much as looks at the economy of today with a climbing interest rate, a falling dollar, steady unemployment, and a gross national product that is not growing one iota. One more time. <clears throat> Mr. President, I truly appreciate the remarks of the distinguished majority leader and I wholeheartedly associate myself with them particularly in praise and compliments to the distinguished senior senator from Vermont and his colleague, the ranking member of the Budget Committee, the senator from South Carolina. Mr. President, it is obvious if one looks at the historical record since we passed the Budget Act that we have not succeeded in regulating or controlling the federal budget. In particular, we have failed to prevent an intolerable annual deficit that has continued to increase in each of the years since that time, and we have not succeeded in controlling the other federal borrowing, the so-called off-budget borrowing of the federal government. This borrowing does not receive nearly as much press, but it now amounts to well over $100 billion total. This borrowing, this competition by the federal government, within the private sector for the monies that you or I or anybody else in this country needs in order to increase their personal business activities, has resulted not only in an extraordinary pressure on interest rates, but also has underlying mechanisms that make it the principal cause of rampaging inflation. So Mr. President, the problem is we have not succeeded, and that is the bottom line. The Budget Act, although it may have reduced the level of deficit in borrowing, nevertheless, 
has clearly failed. And this is clear to anyone who so much as looks at the economy of today with a climbing interest rate, a falling dollar, steady unemployment, and a gross national product that is not growing one iota. As we look at the problem, we must ask ourselves, why has it not worked? I do not think we can say it has been solely the fault of the Budget Committee. They have met their schedules roughly. They have tried to give the Senate and the House and the government in general guidelines to follow them. Had we been able to follow them, clearly would have reduced, if not eliminated, federal borrowing. Rather, Mr. President, I think the problem has been in the reaction of the Congress as a whole and the committees more specifically to the budget process. There has been almost a hostility and a de facto incompatibility between the actions of the Budget Committee and the actions of the Appropriations Committee and the Finance Committee. Those three committees represent the essence of the financial control mechanism within the Congress. As everyone will recall, almost invariably, the appropriations process and the processes that fall under the jurisdiction of the Finance Committee have followed rather than led the budget process. It is my belief that the Budget Act will only work if the Appropriations Committee and the Finance Committee report their actions to the Senate and to the House prior to any finalization of budget action by the Budget Committee. I am well aware as Chairman of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Labor, Health and Human Services and Education that in pa the past the bill under the jurisdiction of that committee has been one of the last, if not the last, bill to be handled by the Senate and it is usually handled very late in the session in every year. In fact, last year we did not even handle that bill. There was not even a markup. Today we are operating on a continuing resolution dealing with that and other important matters. Mr. President, we cannot allow that system to continue. If it does continue, the budget process will continue to fail. There can be no other reasonable conclusion. With this dilemma in mind, the distinguished chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee has encouraged the subcommittee chairman and the Appropriations Committee as a whole to move quickly and vigorously to do its job in anticipation of and in parallel with the actions of the budget process. Let's try that one again. Let's try that one again. As we look at the problem, we must ask ourselves, why has it not worked? I do not think we can say it has been solely the fault of the Budget Committee. They have met their schedules roughly. They have tried to give the Senate and the House and the government in general guidelines to follow that. Had we been able to follow them, clearly would have reduced, if not eliminated, federal borrowing. Rather, Mr. President, I think the problem has been in the reaction of the Congress as a whole and the committees more specifically to the budget process. There has been almost a hostility and a de facto incompatibility between the actions of the Budget Committee and the actions of the Appropriations Committee and the Finance Committee. Those three committees represent the essence of the financial control mechanism within the Congress. As everyone will recall, almost invariably, the appropriations process and the processes that fall under the jurisdiction of the Finance Committee have followed rather than led the budget process. It is my belief that the Budget Act will only work if the Appropriations Committee and the Finance Committee report their actions to the Senate and to the House prior to any finalization of budget action by the Budget Committee. I am well aware as Chairman of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Labor, Health and Human Services and Education that in the past the bill under the jurisdiction of that subcommittee has been one of the last, if not the last, bill to be handled by the Senate and it is usually handled very late in the session in each year. In fact, last year we did not even handle that bill. There was not even a markup. Today we are operating on a continuing resolution dealing with that and other important matters. Mr. President, we cannot allow that system to continue. 
If it does continue, the budget process will continue to fail. There can be no other reasonable conclusion with this dilemma in mind. The distinguished chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee has encouraged the subcommittee chairman and the Appropriations Committee as a whole to move quickly and vigorously to do its job in anticipation of and in parallel with the actions of the budget process. It is my belief that this is the only way in which we will ever get control in the Congress of that process. The Budget Committee just should not be expected to act either on resolutions such as are before us today, which deal primarily with the expenditures of this fiscal year, or with its normal resolutions dealing with the next fiscal year's expenditures without definitive detailed judgments being provided by the Appropriations and Finance Committees in a timely manner. And the Appropriations Committee began its process in late January through a set of oversight hearings dealing with the economy, and then the subcommittees have gone to work to understand the budget parameters under their jurisdiction with an eye toward providing detailed recommendations to the Budget Committee in a timely manner. This, I believe, has now been done. The budget numbers that are before us today do reflect that kind of deliberation and reflect a growing and improving working relationship between the Appropriations Committee and the Budget Committee, one which I think holds a promise of finally bringing this juggernaut under control. Today, the Senate Budget Committee has filed its report on reconciliation for spending in the next fiscal year, including its recommendations to the Senate Appropriations Committee that overall spending that falls under the jurisdiction of that committee be reduced by $13.5 billion. This is an extraordinary number, one which I believe is realistic and achievable, but only through continued diligent efforts on the part of every subcommittee of the Appropriations Committee, of that committee itself, and eventually on the part of the Senate. Actually, this is a very important step in enacting uh, the economic recovery program of the President, and one which I am sure members of both parties will support in the final analysis, although details may be adjusted. The Senate Appropriations Committee will now proceed to develop and refine its activities with respect to this budget resolution and should be able to report to the Senate a rescission bill that will comply with the dates contained in the committee's instructions. That reply, of course, will be to the full Senate. It is my hope, as I am sure it is the Chairman's hope, that we will be able to meet the 13.5 billion dollar number contained therein. Okay, space up. Let's do one for Reba. Okay, ready? We will read this one back. <coughs> the remarks of the distinguished majority leader and I wholeheartedly associate myself with them particularly in praise and compliments to the distinguished senior senator from Vermont and his colleague the ranking member of the budget committee the senator from South Carolina mr. president it is obvious if one looks at the historical record since we passed the budget that we have not succeeded in regulating or controlling the federal budget. In particular, we have failed to prevent an intolerable annual deficit that has continued to increase in each of the years since that time, and we have not succeeded in controlling the other fe federal borrowing, the so-called off-budget borrowing of the federal government. This borrowing does not receive nearly as much press but it now amounts to well over $100 billion total. This borrowing, this competition by the federal government within the private sector for the monies that you or I or anybody else in this country needs 
in order to increase their personal and business activities has resulted not only in an extraordinary pressure on interest rates, but also has underlying mechanisms that make it the principal cause of rampaging inflation. So Mr. President, the problem is we have not succeeded. That is the bottom line. The bottom of the Budget Act, although it may have reduced the level of deficit in borrowing, nevertheless has clearly failed. That is clear to everyone who so much as looks at the economy of today with a climbing interest rate, a falling dollar, steady unemployment, and a gross national product that is not growing one iota. As we look at the problem, we must ask ourselves, why has it not worked? I do not think we can say it has been solely the fault of the Budget Committee. They have met their schedules roughly. They have tried to give the Senate and the House and the government in general guidelines to follow them. Had we been able to follow them clearly, we would have reduced, if not eliminated, federal borrowing. Rather, Mr. President, I think the problem <clears throat> has been in the reaction of the Congress as a whole and the committees more specifically to the budget process. There has been almost a hostility and a de facto incompatibility between the actions of the budget committee and the actions of the appropriations committee and the finance committee. Those three committees represent the essence of the financial control mechanism within the Congress. As everyone will recall, almost invariably, the appropriations process and the processes that fall under the jurisdiction of the Finance Committee have followed rather than led the budget process. It is my belief that the Budget Act will only work if the Appropriations Committee and the Finance Committee report their actions to the Senate and to the House prior to any finalization of budget action by the Budget Committee. I am well aware as Chairman of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Labor, Health and Human Services and Education that in the past the bill under the jurisdiction of that committee has been one of the last if not the last bill to be handled by the Senate and it is usually handled very late in the session in each year. In fact, last year we did not even handle that bill. So that was not even a markup. Today, we are operating on a continuing resolution dealing with that and other important matters. Okay, question by defense attorney. Dr. Aguirre, do you recall my contacting you regarding this matter? Yes, I do. Do your notes indicate the date? I don't have the date on any notes that I usually take, but the contact was made possibly by you on September the 9th or the 14th or the 10th. It would be Thursday or Friday. Mrs. Rondonera contacted me on the 14th or the 15th. Dr. Aguirre, would your notes indicate that it was August perhaps? Thank you. It is August. I noticed my notes here. Now, do you recall why I contacted you? Yes, I do. Could you tell the court the gist of our conversation or what our conversation was? Yes. You indicated to me that you were encouraging your client to come in to me because I had rapport and understanding with the child because I had seen her and that Mrs. Rondonera had expressed her concern that possibly the child was being molested by the father, and that you had encouraged her to come to me. So that subsequent to that, she called my office and we made an appointment to see her and the child. Dr. Aguirre, do you recall my saying that we were very concerned about making accusations that might not have any foundation? Yes, I do. Was there anything in our conversation to indicate to you that I was seeking an opinion one way or the other? Well, my understanding of our conversation was for me to explore with the child whether in fact there was any truth to the comments made by the child to the mother and the mother sharing them with you. Now, did you make an appointment? 
Did you see the minor child? Yes, I did. What discussion or tests did you have with her? What did I do? Well, excuse me, this is going to be very, very critical. And if he had discussions, I would like to have those as a group. If we had tests, I would like those as a group. I don't want discussions and tests intermingled. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you have any discussions with the minor child? Yes, I did. Did you discuss with her the allegations that I made to you, Mrs. Rondonera, made to you? Yes, I did. Excuse me, excuse me, Your Honor. That's all right, it's not your fault. Everybody stay where you are. Counsel, may I see you in chambers? You may proceed, thank you. Dr. Aguirre, did Sarah describe any actions that Mr. Klieger took with her that I am going to object to the manner of questioning, Your Honor. I think counsel is leading Dr. Aguirre. I think she would be more concerned about what he observed about the child than what counsel would like him to say. We are all concerned that we have a true reflection of what may have occurred between the child and Sarah in this case. And it may be that it's going to be a leading question, but I don't know because the question was not completed. Dr. Aguirre, when the question is completed, if you would pause, sir, before you start your answer. Thank you. Please restate your question. <clears throat> Dr. Aguirre, calling your attention to your report of August 27, 1984, you mentioned the things that the minor child reported to you. Yes. Could you tell the court what that was? The child indicated upon inquiry and the presentation of a drawing or pictures of nude dolls, sexually explicit dolls. I use the pictures because Sometimes children like to play with the dolls and sometimes lose the focus. So I use this method. So upon inquiry, I asked her questions like, to identify parts of the body, like the head and the nose and the eyes and the genitals and so on, and to kind of ease into the experience of being directly questioned directly. And I asked her if her father tickled her or touched her, and her comments were yes, that he would tickle her under the armpits, for example, or under the feet when they were playing and so on. So then I asked her if her father had touched her and I pointed to the genital area on this picture and she said no. She said that her father had showed her how to, she didn't use the word manipulate, how to do this. She used her forefinger and thumb to her genitals or clitoris on top of her vulva. She also indicated daddy showed me, did not say the father touched her, showed me. I lay on the bed sometimes without clothes and that sometimes father will be under the sheets and he moves and wiggles. But she was not explicit as to how that took place. Did she indicate that the father was nude under the sheets with her? No. She said the father was nude but not with her. That she would be elsewhere and that he was under the sheets by himself. Now, were there any other things that the child told you that caused you concern? No. Other than just the father teaching her as she demonstrated Excuse me, you have answered the question. Thank you. The answer was no, no. Did you discuss this with Mr. Klieger? Yes, I did. What was his reaction? He denied the experience having taken place. And then further, he indicated that when the child had a vaginal infection and that Mrs. Klieger also had to be to the doctor's office, that medication was given and that he did apply the medication to the vaginal area. And that was his only acknowledgement of any kind of touching on the child's genitals or body. When the child was discussing it, did she discuss it as having medication applied to her vaginal area? No, she did not. Did you observe the child with Mr. Klieger? Yes, I did. Could you make any comments on those observations? Well, at what period of time do you mean by the observations? Because there were different stages of that. Was there anything that you observed when you observed the father and daughter together that caused you any concern? Yes. And what was that? During the last visit, which was rather strained on the part of Mr. Klieger and myself, I was monitoring the visit, and the purpose of that visit was for the father and the child to visit. And I had laid the ground rules about what questions he could not ask and not lead the child into anything that had to do with the issues involved only for them to visit. And Mr. Klieger was quite upset and his energy was anxious. And the child also became very anxious. And when she went to the toy box to play, she took a number of plastic light chain links that 
tool used to develop fine motor coordination. And she put these together and in a moment just swung that plastic chain at the father out of anger. So he was surprised and shocked about that. And he asked the question, what's wrong? So I also intervened and asked her if she was angry. She said yes. And that caused me concern because the child previously at times has related very comfortably for a few minutes. And then she loses interest and she wants to go play with the toys. And then father either has to read to her during those visitations or they play together on the floor. Or I participated just, excuse me sir, after Sarah said she was angry, what did you do or say, if anything? I asked her why she was angry. What did she do or say, if anything? She did not respond. She just said she was angry. That was it? That was it. Yes, there was no response to the question. Question by defense attorney. <clears throat> Dr. Aguirre, do you recall my contacting you regarding this matter? Yes, I do. Do your notes indicate the date? I don't have the date on any notes that I usually take, but the contact was made possibly by you on September the 9th or the 14th or the 10th. That would be Thursday or Friday. Mrs. Rondonera contacted me on the 14th or the 15th. Dr. Aguirre, would your notes indicate that it was August perhaps? Uh, thank you. It is August. I noticed my notes here. Now, do you recall why I contacted you? Yes, I do. Could you tell the court the gist of your conversation or what our conversation was? Yes. You indicated to me that you were encouraging your client to come in to me because I had a rapport and understanding with the child because I had seen her and that Mrs. Rondonera had expressed her concern that possibly the child was being molested by the father and that you had encouraged her to come to me. And so that subsequent to that, she called my office and we made an appointment to see her and the child. And Dr. Aguirre, do you recall my saying that we were very concerned about making accusations that might not have any foundation? Yes, I do. Was there anything in our conversation to indicate to you that I was seeking an opinion one way or the other? Well, my understanding of our conversation was for me to explore with the child whether in fact that there was any truth to the comments made by the child to the mother and the mother sharing them with you. Now, did you make an appointment? Did you see the minor child? Yes, I did. What discussions or tests did you have with her? What did you do? Well, excuse me, this is going to be very, very critical, and if he had discussions, I would like to have those as a group. If he had tests, I would like those as a group. I don't want discussions and tests intermingled. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you have any discussions with the minor child? Yes, I did. Did you discuss with her the allegations that I made to you, Mrs. Rondonera made to you? Yes, I did. Excuse me. Excuse me, Your Honor. That's all right. It's not your fault. Everybody stay where you are. Counsel, may I see you in chambers? You may proceed. Thank you. Dr. Aguirre, did Sarah describe any actions that Mr. Cleaver